Okay, this is the video solution for homework number six, lab 54, and you guys are expected to submit problem number two. And problem number two is pretty much the same thing as problem number one, which I have done, by the way, as a video for uh, uh, lab 53, if you want to see that. The only difference is that uh, uh, this is to be modeled with shell uh, with solid element not shell element so we have a folded sheet metal like that the dimensions are given this is your problem okay your problem is here the dimensions are given up there this thickness is one inch made out of steel this end is clamped and you're subjecting it to compressive force and and you want to know what the buckling loads are uh, now you're asked to use parabolic solid elements tetrahedral elements with a size of two two inches and uh, just remind you that the people, if did problem one, which is what people in the other section had to do, uh, you predicted a load of 2.3 million pounds. It was ridiculous, but uh, uh, it's a very non-conservative value. Things will, will uh, collapse before that, that number. Now, uh, the other thing is, uh, Yeah, the other thing is that uh, uh, you're asked not to use any symmetries at all because it's a bad idea to use symmetries in buckling natural frequency calculation uh, because you will miss low buckling modes and you will miss natural frequency modes and things like that. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, where is it? So... Uh, Mike's strategy is to make that folded sheet metal and then go to part design and thicken it by one inch. Not thicken it, thicken it by one inch. So let's start with a part file. Immediately we're going to save it, file, save management, save as, uh, desktop. Uh, what is that? New folder. This is going to be lab 54, problem two. Problem two. Okay. So on that plane, I will sketch three inch by three inch D shape type thing, like that, like this like so so left control right control oops middle axis I want to make it nice and symmetric although I'm not using symmetry but I uh, <laughs> I like symmetry so uh, dimension this thing this is three inches and this is ten Good, exit, and extrude it by 10 inches, uh, uh, by 20 inches, right, 20 inches. So that's the folded sheet metal, and now uh, let's apply material to this. This is all made out of steel on that part, say okay. Now I want to make the, give this thing thickness and make a three-dimensional object out of it. Now, in order to do that, you have to go to part design. As soon as you say three-dimensional object, uh, you know, solid object, you have to go to part design, and there is this thick surface, thick surface, not thick surface, thick surface. So you select this, you go half an inch outward, and half an inch indoor, inward. And there we are. Now, there is a surface. This is a surface that we originally had. You can hide it. You can delete it, but you can always hide it. Okay, so this is my uh, steel. So, I'll uh, save everything. Immediately, we're going to go to generative shape design. Katia will mesh this thing for you. But I'm asked to use parabolic, it is, and two inches, two inch thickness. It's going to be a terrible mesh. Uh, right click mesh visualization. Terrible mesh. Deactivate. 
All right, you're told that this end is clamped. So that face is clamped. Uh, now I suppose uh, you're gonna have to do all three of these, okay? The way it is set up because, because I did a thickening thingy. And then you apply a dummy load of one pound to, to these faces. Let me hide this sketch. Okay, so let's see now. You apply a force, dummy force, on this face and that face and that face, a total one pound in the direction Y. You can see that. You're compressing this in direction Y. Dummy load of one pound. And uh, save the analysis, file, save management. Uh, analysis, save as. Uh, this, uh, this is the right folder, lab 54, problem two. So we just put it in there. So we're gonna run a static analysis first. And that's the way CATIA works. First, you have to do, uh, run a static analysis. And this was static analysis. Let's make this thing def deform. It's a dummy load. Probably, you know, it'll bend, uh, it'll bend and compress and things like that. You can see that right, right there. Okay. Deactivate this. And then you're going to say insert a buckling case. Buckling case. And as soon as you see that, CATIA says, oh, where is that static analysis that you just did? Well, you go get it from the tree. It's asking for that. See, this is the one that you just did. It's asking for this. You select it, you say, okay, and that's it. You just run it. And it will give you the buckling loads or buckling factors and the modes, okay? So if you if you click on this, it'll give you the first buckling load, mode, <laughs> mode, and the factor. If you double click on it, it says uh, two points, Almost 2.4. The other one was 2.3. So take your one pound, multiply it by that. That's going to give you the, the buckling load. Now, this is a non-conservative value. In other words, the real-life situation is going to buckle before that, well below before that. And part of the reason is that this stuff that we're doing, we're doing linear buckling analysis, it assumes material does not yield. If you ever put a load like that, material already yields it will not buckle and if yields then obviously all bets are off but it gives you non-conservative value and then you get some other modes of uh, uh, some other modes of buckling for example these side plates buckle and things like that but these are you know meaningless because once the structure buckles then in all likelihood it uh, in all likelihood not always the case it will collapse that is that statement is not correct however uh, one can believe it at least. All right, this is it. So if you want to see how it's done with shell elements, go and watch the video for lab 53, please. Thank you. Have a good vacation. Remember, we are having a midterm on July 3rd.